Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of the two books Focus Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. We are discussing a series of lectures of Prime Neurology. There are 50 episodes of Prime Neurology and if one listens to these 50 episodes of Prime Neurology, I am sure they would have acquired a good knowledge of Neurology. We are discussing the part 5 of Prime Neurology, Stroke Part 2 Investigations. So this is the fifth episode of Prime Neurology. So in this episode, we are going to discuss the investigations of stroke. First, the brain imaging, CT scan. Brain imaging helps to determine the cause of stroke symptoms. Computer tomography, CT scanning is the mainstay of emergency stroke imaging. The non-contrast or unenhanced CT scanning is rapid sensitive for intracranial hemorrhage and can show cerebral ischemia or other diagnosis but does use ionizing radiation. In patients with a clinical diagnosis of an acute stroke, a CT scan that shows no intracerebral hemorrhage makes an ischemic stroke the likelier diagnosis. Now let's talk about the MRI brain. Magnetic resonance imaging is more sensitive than CT for the changes of cerebral ischemia and provides very detailed images of the brain anatomy although it takes longer than CT to perform. MRI uses powerful magnets that can interfere with medical devices, example pacemakers and metal implants and can be claustrophobic for patients. The three common MRI sequences are T1, T2 and T2 flare. Let's see what these sequences are all about. So this is the T1, this is the T2, this is the T2 flare. The first point to make out on the MRI is to see the CSF fluid. If it is dark, it is T1. If it is white, it is T2. T2 flare is nothing but T2 but the CSF signal is suppressed so it also appears black so that the lesions adjacent can be well seen. So but what is actually the T1? T1 is anatomically correct. T1 is anatomically correct. The grey matter is grey. So you can see the grey matter is grey. The white matter is white. So you can see the white matter. The white matter, this is the white matter, the white matter is white and the cerebrospinal fluid is black. So T1 is anatomically correct. T1 is anatomically correct. The grey matter, that is the cortex is grey. The white matter is white. The cerebrospinal fluid is black. The grey matter is grey. The white matter is white and the cerebrospinal fluid is black. Whereas T2, whereas T2 is the reverse of T1. So cortex, the grey matter is white, whereas the white matter is grey. So this is grey, you can see it is grey and the CSF is white. So it's reverse of T1, the grey matter is white, the white matter is grey and cerebrospinal fluid is white. What is flare? Fluid attenuated inversion recovery sequence. That means it is same as T2, same as T2. But the CSF is white here, but the CSF signal is suppressed, so it appears black. So T2 flare is T2, but CSF signal is suppressed, so it appears black. So that adjacent lesions are well seen. So this is T2 with CSF signal dampened. So it is like T2 only. The gray matter is white here. Here also gray matter is white. The white matter is gray in T2. Here also it is gray on T2 flare. But but in T2 the CSF is white whereas in T2 flare CSF is black. Diffusion weighted imaging. This is the most useful sequence for detecting 
early infarction. So diffusion weighted Im imaging DWI adds sensitivity for cerebral ischemia compared with other MRI sequences. In acute stroke, CT may show no evidence of early infarction, but a corresponding image seen on DWI may show changes of infarction. For example, this is the pa same patient done with CT and then with diffusion weighted imaging. See here in CT scan, we are not able to see the acute stroke. But same patient when we have done DWI, it clearly shows the hyper intense signal. Why is there hyper intense signal on DWI? The MRI actually picks up the moving hydrogen ions. So when there is a movement of the hydrogen ions known as Brownian movement, it does not cause any high intensity signal. But in infarction, when there is cerebral edema, there is swelling of the cells, the intercellular space gets reduced and the hydrogen ions may not be able to move freely. This restriction of movements of hydrogen ions because of the reduction of the intercellular space because of the cerebral edema causes this hyper intense signal. So diffusion weighted imaging is a very good sequence to pick up cerebral ischemia and acute stroke very early. So this is the DWI. Yeah. Now we will talk about the vascular imaging. Imaging of the carotid artery and of intra and extra cranial vessels can influence practice by demonstrating carotid stenosis which guides decisions about carotid endarctectomy and by showing major vessel occlusion and acute stroke which guides decisions about thrombectomy. Ultrasound, Doppler or duplex scanning is used to image the carotid and the vertebral arteries in the neck to assess the degree of arterial stenosis and the presence of ulcerated plaques. MR angiography or CTA can detect blood flow but the anatomical resolution is still not as good as that of intra-arterial angiography which outlines the blood vessels by injection of radio-opaque contrast intravenously or intra-arterially. Intra-arterial contrast angiography is done only is done only when it is necessary to image the intracranial circulation in detail. Example, aneurysm or arteriovenous malformation because of the significant risk of complications when we give IV contrast. So these are the different techniques for imaging blood vessels. So this is the Doppler. So this is the Doppler scan showing 80% of stenosis of the internal carotid artery. So here we can see the stenosis of the internal carotid artery. This is a three-dimensional CT angiogram showing stenosis at the carotid bifurcation. And this is the MR angiogram showing aneurysm. So this is aneurysm of the middle cerebral artery bifurcation. And this is the angiography showing the arteriovenous malformation. So this is arteriovenous malformation. Arteriovenous malformation is a direct communication between the artery and the veins. There is no intervening arterioles, capillaries and venules. There is a direct communication between the arteries and the veins. And it can be picked up easily. When we give a contrast, it takes time for it to enter from the artery to the vein. Because it has to traverse the artery, arteriole, capillary, venules and vein. But if there is arterio venous malformations is direct communication between the artery and vein. When we inject a contrast, it appears early in the vein. Early filling or early filling of the vein is one of the characteristic features of the arteriovenous malformation. And blood test. The choice of blood test should be guided by the clinical situation. A full blood count, electrolytes and renal function are usually indicated. Blood glucose can be can diagnose undiagnosed diabetes. Lipids may guide lipid lowering therapy and C-reactive protein or ESR may identify an inflammatory response, example endocarditis. Blood glucose testing is very important in stroke patients because hypoglycemia is a strong stroke mimic. 
So we need to do a blood glucose estimation. If it is hypoglycemia, all we need to do is to give IV glucose. Patient becomes all right. Hypoglycemia, I repeat, is a strong stroke mimic and therefore we should always exclude hypoglycemia. And if it is hypoglycemia, it is easier to treat. We just need to give IV glucose and the patient becomes all right. Sometimes we need to do genetic testing for rare for rare inherited conditions such as cell, cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infox and leukoencephalopathy may be indicated. Lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture is reserved for investigation of subarachnoid hemorrhage because the vessels in the sub vessels are present in the subarachnoid space and when they rupture, we have blood in the subarachnoid space so it can be picked up by doing lumbar puncture where the CSF is mixed with blood. So lumbar puncture is reserved for investigation of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Cardiac investigations. ECG may show atrial fibrillation. One of the important causes for stroke, the cardioembolism is atrial fibrillation. So ECG may show atrial fibrillation, an important stroke risk factor. Evidence of LVH, left ventricular hypertrophy or previous myocardial infarction. Prolonged ECG monitoring may reveal short episodes of atrial fibrillation, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, which leads to future ischemic stroke. Echocardiogram may show patent foramen ovale endocarditis or a cardiac tumor. So these are all the important concepts of investigations of stroke. The other important concepts of clinical neurology, I put in a book called Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology, written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas, published by say, White Army. Mm -hmm. This book will be very useful for students preparing for clinical neurology exams and if, and if interested, this book could be purchased. The other book I have written is Focused Neurology, written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas, published by CBS Publishers and Distributors. This book contains all theoretical aspects of neurology and will be very useful for students appearing for VIVA or oral exam. This book is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. So if interested, this book could be purchased online. Uh, so these are the important concepts of the investigations in stroke. As I said earlier, there are 50 episodes of prime neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of prime neurology, they would have acquired a good knowledge of neurology. We have just finished another episode of a prime neurology that is the investigation of stroke. I hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of the investigations of stroke. If you have enjoyed, please share the link, please subscribe and please like it. But please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts which is India's leading neurology educational YouTube channel and my webpage, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.